Okay, so now we're gonna um, get into trying to clean up plots so they are you know more presentable. Um, so again, here we're, we're just using the defaults in terms of colors and labels and whatnot. So now I'm going to show you just how to make some changes to make your plots look a little bit better. Now um, there's lots you can do with this, so you're not going to see examples of everything. But I tried to show some of the common things we want to change and work with, um, and also. Um, these examples should be, if you want to do something else, you sh these should be somewhat similar, so you should be able to adapt them if you have a specific use case or want to make some change that we didn't uh, demonstrate here. So this code looks a little um, intimidating, but it's really just stringing stuff together and editing this object. Okay, cool. So um, here I'm creating a figure um, and I'm using plot dot subplot, but it's just going to have one axis this time <coughs> instead of multiple, which is the defaults. So I didn't specify it, and I'm I'm specifying a new figure size there inside of it. So again, it generates the entire figure and then the axes. In this case, just one, and then I'm actually placing the plot inside of the axis as opposed to the figure. And the reason why I'm doing that is that provides more control generally. So even though in this case the figure and the plot are kind of the same since there's only one uh, ax axis, um, uh, the, uh, generally you want to do this subplot method because it gives you more options in terms of changing things and whatnot. Okay, so anyway, this generates the base plot, right? So um, I'm using axis.plot and I'm taking the wavelength and plotting that to the um, x-axis and the reflectance and plotting that to the y-axis. Um, then I'm setting a collar, a line width, and then a marker and I'm setting the marker to empty. So basically what this should produce, actually what I'm going to do is add a block in. Uh, I'm add a block in here so we can just run this kind of piecemeal. Um, I'm basically producing like a line graph with, and I'm not showing the, I'm just showing the line, I'm not showing the points. So let me do plot.show fig here. Okay, so if I run this, I should just kind of get back the default, right? So the default x x axis and y axis and then I did change the collar. Did I specify the collar here using a hex code? And I also changed the line width and I got rid of the markers. Um, if I didn't do that, let me just it should draw the markers by default. Well, I guess it doesn't. Never mind. Um, we can make the line thinner, thicker. I'm just showing you what the settings are doing here. And there are different options for markers and stuff that, um, yeah, yeah, oops, fix that. Okay, so that's kind of like the base plot. <coughs> All right, so then the, now we're just applying methods to the, to the, like, the subplot or the axis to make changes. So this set title, basically what that does is it allows you to add a title, and I'm specifying a font size and then the font color, and this is effectively just um, black, right, or sorry white <laughs> it's white um, and then uh, and then this adds and adds a label to the x-axis so we're saying it's wavelength in nanometers setting a size setting a color add a y-axis label so percent reflectance and then the size and the color and then this edits the tick marks so I wanted to adjust this so it goes from 0 to 0.7 and these are the breaks or ticks in between and then, so that's what YTix does. And then YTix labels applies labels. Now, if you give it a different length of ticks, if the label, if the length of the list of um, labels is different than the length of the actual ticks, then it's going to give you an error, right? And then this is the size of the of the labels in the collar. And then um, X limit. Um, that is the range of x values to show, so the lowest and highest. So I wanted to start at 0.4, and I wanted to go up to 2.5. Um, and then again, this is setting the lay the tick marks on the x-axis, 
and then this is setting the tick mark. This is setting the names of the tick marks. Um, this is a new argument here. This rotate equals 45. That will rotate the labels, so I, they're a little longer. So if I leave them uh, horizontal, they'll run into each other a little. So if I rotate them a bit, then you know it's a it's a better use of space. Um, okay, let me try to run. Well, actually, we'll just well let's see if we can. I'm just gonna run all of. I'm gonna copy this up here. So I'm gonna keep the plot show. Okay. There we go. So <clears throat> now we can see what the changes this has made. So here we can see our our divisions and our labels and everything, our title. So this is starting to look a lot cleaner, right? It looks more like a more presentable graph. And the rest of this is really just manipulating. Um, we well actually we're at it. We're doing a couple unique things here, but and then we're just doing some some collar manipulation. Okay, so. Um, this is a spectral reflectance curve, um, which shows how the reflectance of a leaf in this case changes with wavelength. So you know, this is the blue and the red and the green. So leaves absorb a lot of blue and red, um, and they absorb less green. So that's why leaves look green. This is the near infrared. So they reflect a lot or scatter a lot of near infrared. And then out here is the short wave. These are like wa absorptions re related to water and the tissue. So what I like to do is differentiate the ranges here. So highlight the the the, range, the visible spectrum, the near infrared spectrum, and the short wave spectrum. And that's what this is doing. So this, this AXV span basically sets that up. So basically, I'm creating an area, or I'm I'm creating a uh, I'm defining an area from 0.4 to 0.5 on the x-axis. So this is a, a vertical the span, I guess. Um, and we're going to shade that to blue. 0.5 to 0.6 will get shaded to green. 0.6 to 0.7 are shaded to red. And then the alpha is just applying a transparency. So let me, I'm just going to copy those up for now so you can see what that's going to do. Put it run. There we go. So now we have these collars behind there. Okay, and then... Um, yeah, and then the last two here, I just pick a collar to shade in the near infrared and the um, and then the short wave infrared. And uh, you know, obviously, there we don't. There's not collars associated with those two. We can't see those ranges, so we just picked a collar that I thought looked good. And you can see there's the breaks. Um, yeah, so that was done with this um, x y v span method, or a x v span method. Okay, and then um, this grid, what that does is it adds a grid to it, like X, Y grid. So basically I'm adding a um, X grid. So I'm giving it a collar. I'm providing a little transparency. It's going to be solid. And then the line width is set to 0.7. So let's see what that does. Again, I'm just kind of adding these on one at a time. So... Um, that added in lines there. It's kind of hard to see. Um, and then the y-axis. Just <coughs> again, these are just going to be it along each of the tick marks, or or, rel or um, there'll be one for each tick mark, I guess. So there's those lines. And then lastly, I set a face collar. So that should do it. And. Okay, so I just changed this from like the black to like more of a gray, um, and then that applied the the you know the white text that works well with the white text. So anyway, I think that's fairly presentable. Um, so this looks complicated, but it's really not. Um, let's just try to break some stuff real quick. So let's say for ex one thing I mentioned before is you have to make sure that your ticks. Um, and your tick labels have the same length. So like if I deleted one of these, it should give me an error. Yeah, so the number of fixed locator loca locations, eight, use, usually from a call to set ticks does not match the number of tick labels, which is seven, which is exactly the problem. So that's an example of a good error message. Note that these are also just based on the position. So, you know, if you messed up, messed this up, maybe put 5%, sorry, it was like 5%, 10%, 15%. 
there'll just be wrong. There's no check there. So you have to make sure you know it makes sense. Okay, cool. So anyway, that was this is the full result, as you can see there. Okay, so this is a different graph. Um, <coughs> what I'm going to do is just make it, or just let it run, and then we'll talk through why it looks the way that it does. Okay, cool. So um, this is, so now we have two axes, right? So I create a subplot with two rows and one column, so a total of two axes. And then this is setting the plot size. Um, and then this uh, soup title is a title for the entire figure as opposed to a title for a specific plot. So I'm just providing a title for a plot, the plot size, and then the, the, uh, the font color. And then I'm creating a scatter plot, which I am assigning to the first row, so index 0, so that's this one. And it's showing elevation as x and temperature as y. This is the point color, this is the marker symbol, and the z order has to do with stacking. Um, and I did this because I wanted the points to draw above the grid. Um, so that's what it, it, it controls the order of drawing. Okay, and then the rest of this is actually pretty simple. So um, I'm adding a title for that subplot with a font size and a collar, and then X and Y axis titles, font sizes and collars. I'm editing the, the, tick, the tick marks and labels for the Y axis and the, and the, uh, and the X axis. Um, and then I push the grid back and make sure that it's beneath the points, right? And then the rest of this is just effectively replicating that process, but for the second plot. So again, I make a scatter plot, but now we're doing elevation as x and percent force as y. Again, set a collar, set a marker type, set a z order. Let's real quick just like um, I'm gonna Google point markers uh, mat plot lib and see what it, we should be able to find. Some here we go. So, oops, sorry about that. So anyway, this website shows you some of the different markers, right, and what, how you call them. So let's say, for example, we wanted to use, uh, let's see here, something that's obvious, I guess. Um, uh, let's use like this hex, well, that's, um, uh, let's use this big H. So if I wanted to change that, I would just do H there. And now we have a different symbol, right? So anyway, there's, again, the online help for this stuff is generally pretty good. All right, so anyway, for the second one there, we use a different symbol. It's like a diamond. You know, again, set, set a title, set axes labels, set, set the ticks and tick labels for the X and Y axis. Um, move the grids down so they so they're beneath the points, and then last I just changed the background color to this like gray color. Um, yeah, so uh, looks complicated, but it's really just a series of edits made to um, two different plots in this case, um, or sorry, two different subplots, which are then within the same plot. Uh, fig one is the plot, and axis are the are the subplots. So at index zero for the first one, at index one for the second one. All right, this is similar. Let's do another, so I'm gonna run this. See what we have here. Basically the same, I just changed out some collars. So here I change, I, this last option, fig one patch dot set face collar. You can use that to change the background collar. So here I basically changed the background collar and I also swapped out the font collars uh, from to black as opposed to, to, to white. That's all I was really showing there. The rest of the code is basically the same. So I just changed this color and then all the associated like font colors to make them black. <clears throat> okay, this is something I um, stole from the online help from Plotlib. So this was not something that I, I came up with. And I just basically want to make a point that you can have axes that actually take up Different different amounts of space and have different orientations. Um, so this is just showing that as an example. 
<coughs> sorry. So here we're specifying different, basically different sets of grids, um, and those grids um, have their own like you know dimensions, and these are all your axes. Um, so we're we're no, I don't really need to do anything that complicated, but I did just want to, I put this in here because I wanted you to note that. Um, if you need to build something where all the axes have different you know, dimensions or shapes, take up different amount of space in the plot, you can define those. Um, you can define those if you want. Okay, cool. Um, cool. Okay, so I'm not going to get into that in detail. Um, this is just another example with different dimensions there, and then another example again where I'm actually putting stuff in those locations so once they're built out I basically am just putting some box plots and scatter plots in the, into them now I'm not saying this is good this is not a great layout I'm just trying to show you how you can use them so anyway if you're interested in something like that where you want to use features and different sizes and aspect ratios and whatnot um, have a look a deeper look at these examples and there's more examples available in the matplotlib documentation